visiting today from various campuses, technology institutions, premier institutions, universities, colleges, at times even higher secondary schools also. It's all innovative thinking, whether it is product or the service that they launch. We have seen stories like Ritesh Agrawal of Oyo Room, Fanindra Sama of Red Bus .in, Bansals, you know, from IIT campus, they emerge. Several other entrepreneurs that have emerged. So while the number of startups have accelerated very significantly in the country, until 5-10 years back, hardly few hundred startups were there. Today there are 70,000, 70, 70,000 plus startups in the country. You might have also read that there are about 100 plus unicorns in the country. Unicorns, when the business reaches 1 billion plus dollar in valuation. Again, it used to take a year for one unicorn to emerge. Today, every 10th day, one unicorn is emerging. This year, in the month of January, eight unicorns came to the fore. In year 2021, which was very, very difficult for businesses, about 43 new unicorns emerged. We have seen that. And forget unicorns. We are now talking of decacorns having a $10 billion worth of valuation. There are quite a few, three, four have achieved to that level. So startups are there, unicorns are there. Number of technology business incubators. Again, there was only one agency within the government of India that was Department of Science and Technology supported National Science Technology Entrepreneurship Development Board of DST. They were supporting for the cause of establishment of TBIs, Technology Business Incubators. Primarily, they were there. Today, we have DST, we have DBT, Biotechnology, we have MSME, we have Atal Innovation Mission, Atal Incubation Center. So number of ministries, number of departments are there supporting for the cause of establishment of incubation center. NASCAM report 2020 has documented that about 520 functional active incubation centers are there in the country. There are number of accelerators and both private sector incubation centers and accelerators have been functional in the country. We have seen that. Lots of things are going on. Also, uh, if you, if you uh, happen to see the NASCAM report, you will find that uh, uh, while it appears that uh, most of these startups are in the, in the technology domain or necessarily in the technology domain, that is also not true. NASCAM says that 53% of all startups, these are in non-technology domain. So still the majority is dominated by non-technology, 47% are in the technology field. What it means that there is opportunity for everyone to start a, an enterprise or a startup, even in traditionally, what you call the traditional businesses, conventional businesses as well, if you are able to add value. If you can do some do something different, if you are innovative, it could be in the schools, it could be in the art, culture. In fact, government is supporting for the cause of establishment of businesses in art, culture, heritage. A lot of such opportunities are there. Handicrafts. Also, you might have noticed that the profile of entrepreneurs is changing. When I joined EDI 1993, about 30 years back, 29 years back, 
at that time the kind of profiles we used to have people like karsan bhai patel or maybe dhirubhai ambani they were they were the role models they continue to be the role model inspire us but if you look at it that their success was dominated by an entrepreneurial idea thinking and the profile of entrepreneurs at that time was not necessarily those who were highly educated they might be moderately educated but they had a very very strong sense of entrepreneurial acumen which paved the way for their success but today if you look at it the kind of startups are coming and most of these are coming from campuses or those who have just come out of the campuses so they their profile is that they are uh, educated highly educated they possess technical professional knowledge and particularly in the field that where they are starting the business some names which i would like to cite here bansal's of iit delhi just i mentioned sachin and binni bansal they both are not 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 the brothers they are friends they started flipkart you know that in my city itself mr vishal mehta is there vishal vishal mr vishal mehta had promoted infibeam an it based business and a product of an it graduate from mit massachusetts institute of technology vss money managing director of justdial.com he is a drop out of chartered accountancy again a professional education vijay shekhar sharma we all know whether it was time of demonetization or during the covid period when we probably were more comfortable with the digital currency he is a technology graduate from delhi college of engineering falguni nayar last year the richest indian woman today falguni nayar she is from iim ahmedabad campus and you know the business nayka there are number of other stories that i have kunal bahal snap dale shantanu prakash one of the largest in in uh, edu tech that is uh, educom from bangalore he is from pennsylvania university sorry uh, educom is uh, 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 from srcc delhi university and mba from iim a lot of such stories are there so what it means that you may have to understand that in order to be successful entrepreneur or business person i should have a, uh, knowledge or the technology uh, in the relevant desired field and many of them have had experience some of them the earlier names that i taken they had worked in amazon and or uh, other ventures before launching their own own businesses so that also provides them confidence that if they have some experience in the related line of businesses so for the environment is concerned let me share some some facts the world economic forum's global competitiveness report 2021 ranks india as 43rd out of 64 economies and uh, uh, doing e world banks doing business 2020 report after that it hasn't come 63 out of 190 economies and there has been significant uh, improvement uh, in 2014 15 we were at uh, 128 or 130 from there we have come to uh, 63 rank global innovation index 2020 again ranks us uh, at uh, 50th out of 131 countries we ourselves at our institute we are leading Uh, global entrepreneurship monitor india chapter which is a consortium of about uh, 50 60 countries and it is supposed to be the largest study on entrepreneurial ecosystem in the world one of the key index of this report is total early stage entrepreneurial activity index which is got tea total early stage entrepreneurial activity index it measures 
the entrepreneurial activities indulgence in entrepreneurial activities at the nascent or established businesses or those who are about to launch in the age group of 18 to 65 in a country and based on that an index is given during last 4 or 5 years india's rank uh, uh, index has been consistently improving of course during covid time it was significantly reduced but it has been hovering around less than 10 percent during last five six years this year it has ranked us at 15 percent of total early stage entrepreneurial activity index tea this is the most cited report on entrepreneurship global entrepreneurship monitor i'm citing that reference the report also looks at it and says that india is one of the top three or top four countries when it comes to the perception of youth about how good the environment is or the climate is for starting an enterprise and how confident you are or what kind of entrepreneurial opportunities that we perceive about 82 83 percent youth in the country they feel that yes there are great opportunities for entrepreneurship and i feel confident that we should be able to do that the very very encouraging things and the kind of schemes today are there, you might be aware. Startup India, we all know, which was launched by Honorable Prime Minister in 2016, January in Vigyan Bhavan Startup India Action Plan that has certainly created a very, very favorable climate. Stand Up India, since I see a lot, uh, uh, lot of women, I would uh, urge you to explore the possibility of benefiting from stand up india it's a fabulous scheme for promoting women entrepreneurship and also those who are from the marginalized communities the funding support is given in the range of 10 lakh to 1 crore without collateral and the margin money requirement by the entrepreneur is up to 15 percent what it means that if you want to start a business if any woman and the project cost is 10 lakh, you just need to put in about 1.5. And several state governments have further considered 5% support in terms of margin money support. So that again comes down to 10%. Every bank branch in the country is mandated to support one enterprise promoted by a woman and another by a member or entrepreneur of any uh, uh, SCST community coming from any region. And there are 1.25 lakh bank, bank branches are there. So about two and a half lakh enterprises can be established. You know that government also has very, very attractive schemes for procurement, buying from priority sectors whether it is marginalized communities or uh, MSMEs. And this year, the target was just uh, on 27th June uh, on the MSME day, UN MSME day, Honorable Secret Secretary was uh, talking on an occasion, I was also there. And he said that our target this year was 25% procurement, procurement we should be doing from MSME priority sector. And this year, we have broken the record and we have already achieved 35 percent so you can see that government has this priority sector lending so a lot of lot of things are there atmanirbhar bharat which was announced during the uh, covid period it has a lot of attractive features cgtmsc is there for much bigger size loans credit guarantee trust for micro small enterprises and more than 100 banks known as MLIs, okay, member lending organized institutions. So they are there to support. Make in India is there. Swachh Bharat Mission, we had organized an event ourselves and uh, we had invited experts and uh, uh, they, they, they guided and informed the audience that there are about 200 business opportunities within Swachh Bharat campaign itself, whether in the manufacturing or in the services sector. Further, about 6 lakh 
you might be knowing six lakh villages of this country are to be uh, to be linked through, through optic fiber and still that work is going on and a lot of entrepreneurs are required under that domain there are priority sectors for food processing animal husbandry uh, also promoting tribal entrepreneurship ministry of msme has a very interesting scheme national uh, scheduled cost scheduled tribe hub so there are capacity building programs interventions there are programs for women entrepreneurs there are program for north east a lot of opportunities are there you know that even department of biotechnology has uh, schemes like uh, promoting uh, uh, technology biotechnology based incubation centers atal innovation mission has been supporting <clears throat> also tinkering labs have, labs have been established what i want to say that lot of opportunities are there but how do we benefit from it i am glad that your university has prioritized entrepreneurship i had discussions with professor ghosh i was impressed and i'm sure that with this kind of priority and focus on entrepreneurship the campus will be able to create many more entrepreneurs but if you want to become entrepreneur lot of things are there your professor should be teaching i would talk of just three things which are very very important one is proactiveness how do you take initiative become proactive second is innovativeness and the third is risk taking proactiveness i would say that finding out what needs to be done something which is a problem for others a non entrepreneurial person will always curse the government the administration for not doing anything but an entrepreneurial person will try to find a solution to a problem which exists and see if this problem can be converted into a good opportunity a business opportunity remember every problem could be converted into a lucrative opportunity provided you take initiative you are proactive if i ask the students to name some products or some like a uh, 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 sectors if i ask you to name a chocolate probably the brand that you are going to remember the most is cadbury or in terms of toothpaste it could be colgate in terms of mineral water if i ask you many of you are going to mention the bisleri a photocopier machine it could be xerox though there are other brands like modi and canon are also available but we remember these brands and these brands have become synonym to the generics though they are these are brand names but they have become synonym to the generic because they took initiative they took initiative they were proactive they were proactive so try to find out that what can be done what new can be done second is innovativeness we need to be innovative particularly if you want to take advantage under the government of india startup india scheme funding support one of the criteria is that business needs to be innovative it needs to be scalable it shouldn't be more than 7 years old and in any of the preceding years it should not have it, it should not have achieved the turnover of 100 crores crores so innovativeness is there some people think that some institutions organizations think that being innovative could be very very risky of course it could be very risky if you are thinking of taking a very radical innovation which is never heard could be could be greater risk in war but i would say that not taking not taking or not uh, uh, introducing innovation can pose greater risk 
you know that some of the products are well known well established brands they have suffered no longer they continue to be rated in one of the top among in their sectors like until few years back nokia was the brand leader in mobiles where it is today other brands have taken over in terms of watch hmt used to call itself time keepers to the nation where it is today they still keep on manufacturing but other brands have taken over hmt was caught napping so if you are not innovative can pay pose greater risk and innovation involves it includes commercial viability it includes commercial viability and it is different from invention for innovation you don't need to be a discoverer that i need to discover something but already if something is discovered and probably because of some inherent errors or cost escalation people are not accepting can i do something can it be made cheaper can it be made more durable made more durable can it be made more attractive or can it be improved so not necessarily introduction of a new product or a service but even improvement in an existing product or service can also be an innovation reaching out to a market segment can be an innovation like <clears throat> baby coal earlier when it was introduced it, it was coming in bulk packs and after mar market reached to a saturation they launched it in a small tubes and boxes and soon they found that even school children started using this for their art and craft drawing painting classes same product but with a different kind of packaging they were able to reach out to the newer market segment and it could be possible in any function not only in manufacturing not only in packaging even in marketing exchange scheme itself is a very very innovative scheme hair purchase innovative scheme emi is an innovative scheme even marketing sometimes the campaigns i remember the slogan of quick fix some of you could still recall quick fix slogan was anybody knows the slogan was very innovative it was joins everything except broken hearts very innovative indeed you would remember this so it is possible in any field you can be innovative newer way of ways of processing so shifting from manual to automation is an innovation earlier organizations themselves they were hierarchical today we are seeing flatter organization sbus strategic business units these are all innovations so innovativeness is important it is necessary the third thing which i would like you to remember is risk taking normally it is said that entrepreneurs are not risk takers like gamblers they don't take very high risk they don't take very low risk either so they take moderate calculated risk when i say moderate calculated means means they have an ability remarkable ability to make decisions even when data is not sufficient is not adequate so they can still take decision but that they have to decide that they have to weigh the options how much data is required one of the ancient books on classic books on uh, entrepreneur i read mentioning abhimanyu or mahabharata 
great character abhimanyu as an entrepreneur he had taken that risk we all know he had entered the ch chakra view he knew how to enter the chakra view and he had so much confidence on himself that he knew that once i enter with my bravery with my skills i will defeat the enemy and come out of that so that risk he had taken and he would have been successful but for the fact that because of certain unethical practices he was killed over there so risk taking is very very important there are two specific entrepreneurial risks that i would like you to know one is called sinking the boat risk other is called missing the boat risk sinking the boat risk suppose i want to make this product this pen i would have done all my analysis i would have done my market survey i would have analyzed data prepared report everything i would have done and launched my business but unfortunately my business suffered a loss i lost my money this is called sinking the boat risk my boat is sunk and in that year the balance sheet figures will come crashing the second risk is missing the boat risk i wanted to launch this product i would have launched a market survey analyzed data i was thinking about data that data reading reports consulting professors experts consultants and in the process i took too much time in the meantime another person another person came and launched similar product in the market which eventually became a success what it means what it means that i felt the pinch figures in that year may not come crashing because i have not invested much maybe a slight a little amount towards market survey preparatory exercise expenses but every time my competitor makes a profit i will feel the pinch oh my god i should have done that this is called missing missing the boat risk and for entrepreneurs more than sinking the boat risk it is it is missing the boat risk which is more dangerous so if something has to be done it has to be done on time i will give you an example of a pharmaceutical company with which i was associated and the pharmaceutical company wanted to launch a product on a particular day about 20 years back and uh, they they were ready with their product but there was some controversy in the product and uh, somebody had gone to the court and court had given a stay so on that particular day the stay was vacated and uh, the top management decided that before anybody further goes to the court let us launch this product all india so he gave the interview to uh, aaj tak and other tv channels that we will be launching this product tomorrow they launched this product and next next hour same day this product was launched at about 10 o'clock 11 o'clock another company launched 12 o'clock another company by evening they had about half a dozen product all products had similar composition same same molecule no difference brand name was different but which company got all the limelight the company that launched it the first at about 10 o'clock because the whole day the managing director's interview was kept they they were they kept showing on the national channel and it got the product name got registered the company got registered and i was i mean i i was a consultant to that company for their training developmental efforts and they said that in our segment we maintained leadership for 7 years in that segment with 55% market share just by being one hour ahead of the next rival so my advice to you is that if you are thinking something do your homework prepare your plans but don't wait too long a period don't delay it if you feel if you are confident launch it but there is another side of story also 
if you launch a product without much preparation in a hurry what happens the project suffers do you know which company launched the first pocket calculator in the world do you know which which company launched the first pocket calculator in the world probably you will say casio no that's not the right answer there was a much lesser known company called bomar b o w m a r bomar they launched the first pocket calculator it was very very successful created lot of interest but they couldn't ensure the kind of demand is generated they couldn't ensure sufficient supply of the chip needed in making the calculator and from there it was casio that picked up the demand and we know that casio is the maker of the first pocket calculator so the first product or the first batch of product if it has some inherent deficiencies or if you do not have enough resources then others will benefit your competitors will benefit and you will prove yourself to be a research and development ground for your competitors another example i am giving 2020 you know very very popular ipl i think ipl huge i mean just mind boggling figures were there when some recent uh, tv rights and broadcasting and telecasting rights have been given huge unexpected which organization launched first 2020 it was not the ipl it was not bcci it was icl which was the concept of dr subhash chandra of gtv he had established indian cricket league and engaged the kapil dev the iconic sports person as head of that and kept aside 100 cr for this and when mr kapil dev was announcing jiva telecasting mr lalit modi somewhere sitting and listening to all those and after few days he came with ipl of bcci and setting aside the huge funds for that and we know but an an organization with much bigger resources will always rule the world and that is how precisely happened so be the first mover be proactive but do your homework properly otherwise you will suffer i would also like you to understand that uh, there are different sources of information if you are thinking of i understand that because some research students are also there if you are thinking of doing some research writing a project of what is happening what are the sources of support what are the information from where you will get where you will get that research okay doing business index is there global competitiveness report of world economic forum is there gem report for 10 years that we are leading in the country in india that report is there okay babson babson college also frontiers of research babson series i think that's a very very credible if you want you can have a look at it amway global report every every uh, two years in india it is launched regional entrepreneurship development institute report is there social progress index global talent competitiveness global innovation index so lot of such reports are there that you can look at it and uh, find out that what is what is happening and some of the potential themes for the research could be understanding entrepreneurial networks what kind of networks are there it could be based on the product it could be based on the sectors it could be based on the regions like asia pacific entrepreneurs network <coughs> or south asia entrepreneurs network we have established safir south asia forum for entrepreneurship education and research that we have also the kind of support entrepreneurs provide to each other the social capital of entrepreneurs emotional capital <coughs> of entrepreneurs women entrepreneurship is again a much desired a lot of work has been done but there is a need to further look at it entrepreneurial cognition like uh, 
stigmatization of failed entrepreneurs prevalence and solution in us you can start a business you can fail declare yourself bankrupt and again go to an organ another bank for another idea here in india unfortunately we are not able to distinguish distinguish between failure of a business and failure of an entrepreneur we believe that both are same and therefore lot of stigma is involved and uh, people would like to stick, to avoid that stigma and hence there is hesitation in starting a business we need to come out of that we need to understand so the role of imagination in high technology entrepreneurship that is also very very important or revisiting the theory of plant behavior that is also an important subject a lot of things are there at our institute i would suggest that those who are interested in entrepreneurship research we have established center for research in entrepreneurship education and development creed it is established from our own sources we have a small fund also and if you are if you are doing any research on entrepreneurship and if you want some small support in terms of data collection and uh, you have not been able to get any support from anywhere else you can send your proposal to edi also will get it evaluated and if it is found interesting probably we can we can uh, uh, make that uh, support you don't have to come over here for that also uh, we have a scheme to provide fellowships so those who are doing research and if you want to consult library a good library consult the experts you can apply to edi and uh, we extend that support to you so you can avail that facility for up to 3 months either either at once or you can split it into two times of uh, about 1 uh, and 1/2 month 1 and 1/2 month each and uh, we don't charge any penny penny full hospitality is extended and uh, you can consult library you can uh, look at our online offline resources also consult the faculty we have a journal which has which has already completed 3 decades the journal of entrepreneurship a very very credible publication i request you to contribute into that it has a very high h index of 21 so you can you can submit every every 2 years we organize in addition a biennial conference and probably that is the largest conference on entrepreneurship in the country so next conference is scheduled in uh, uh, february 20 2023 So I extend an invitation to each one of you, even to the researchers, so you can come, uh, interact with the faculty, interact with other delegates, and uh, if you have uh, a synopsis, you can discuss your research synopsis, his his plan with those, and also understand that what kind of analysis etc. would be uh, more uh, appropriate for your work. So a lot of other things are there, and I suggest that. Uh, uh, whenever uh, time permits visit our our site you'll get information and uh, if any specific uh, issue is there if any uh, specific requirements get back to us we'll be delighted to help you serve you we believe that lot of we believe that entrepreneurs are needed and so as thought leaders in entrepreneurship also are required we have our own fellowship program which is the uh, again which has about 13 specializations in entrepreneurship including law policy and governance including corporate entrepreneurship social entrepreneurship uh, including minority tribal and dalit entrepreneurship entrepreneurship pedagogy cluster so many specializations are there so if anything is there you are most welcome to come interact and meet us with this i stop here and uh, maybe few minutes if you have about 5 minutes we can spend if there is any question otherwise thank you very much thank you for giving this invitation to me thank you
Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. First step, I would suggest that uh, look at uh, various businesses. What kind of businesses are there? What are the difficulties in those products or the services? What is your strength? What interests you the most? What skill you have? What resources you have? So if you have something like that, Find out that uh, which scheme, sometime it is also guided by the, by the uh, certain support that we get from various institutions, that they have a scheme for like a PMFME. It is food processing related enterprises that, that uh, scheme is there. So if you want to look at it, please look at that. If you want to take benefit of a small uh, support in the rural context, maybe PMEGP is there. Prime Minister's Employment Guarantee Program. You know that up till now the limit is 25 lakh and government is going to increase it to 50 lakh. And there is a 30-35% subsidy depending upon who promotes it for women. And if, if, if a woman promotes this in rural, rural areas, you will get subsidy of 35% huge subsidy. So these are all either it could be maybe uh, something which uh, you can sell outside or online based on your strength resources skills there is a framework of identifying an idea and then you can evaluate whatever fascinates you you want to do it there are three criteria for assessing it number one is there a technology available for making this number one second is who are the potential buyers who will buy what is the profile of those people and at what price they can afford. And third is the financial, what it takes, what is, what is the cost involved, and when will I be able to recover my cost? So these are some of the basic questions. If you ask yourself, also I would advise those who are interested, please read some biograph biography or autobiography of some good entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. Abhi aajkal je, almost every magazine today has some startup success stories and lot of women success stories are coming. Aap padhiye, Falguni Nair ne kaise, kya, kya kiya? Kiran Majumdar Shah ne kya kiya hai? So please read that. I'm sure that with a person of your profile, you'll be able to not only understand, but also advise others which business to do. Thank you so much.
<clears throat> I would suggest you to look at the schemes and support available with Ministry of Ayush. Ayush. And uh, uh, Ayush is uh, one such ministry, probably our uh, Honorable Prime Minister is paying the maximum uh, attention to that. And recently an international conference was done here and lot of plans are there. We are also involved in a research study that uh, who are the consumers of Ayush, what are the services under Ayush, like uh, Ayurveda, Yunani, uh, Homeopathy, Siddha. So, and what kind of services are there for uh, ensuring well-being, particularly which are uh, based on um, our own uh, Indian heritage, culture, ethos kind of thing. So, so, certain things are there. People are aware that certification documentation is required, particularly when you go to uh, uh, outside market. So, they are working on it. I am I'm aware of that. Hopefully, uh, soon they will be able to come up with their guidelines, but already certain information is available. Number one. And number two, number two, uh, you can uh, uh, propose to them for entrepreneurship development program based on uh, uh, aromatic medicinal herbal plants. And almost every government within the Ministry of Forest, Environment and Climate Change, they have this kind of uh, either scheme already or they are taking interest. We we have been working somewhere. We, we are aware that some state governments are doing. But don't go for just one or two programs. Uh, think of something which can create a visible impact. And you can, uh, uh, in the different districts of Himachal, you can organize such programs wherever such plants and resources are available. And you can show to the state government or the central government the impact that you can create. And do not aim for international market in the first stage. There is a enough demand within the country itself. You can tie up with uh, uh, certain companies. They will also provide you the technology for uh, uh, processing or uh, packaging or uh, uh, making the products available. So make a beginning and I'm sure that you will be able to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Gandhinagar. Great, very good. That is, that is why these issues are in the knowledge of uh, the ministry and uh, we are hopeful that some solution will emerge. Government has been, government has been avoiding middlemen at every stage in other departments also and I am sure that here also it will happen sooner or later. <laughs> yeah. Best wishes. Very good work that you are doing. Thank you. It is a very, very interesting area. Very interesting area.
Uh, am I audible? Uh, I think my this uh, video, I think it's not working. Initially, it was working. Am I visible to you? Uh, actually, sir, initially when I joined through the link, the this uh, video camera it was on. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm correct, correct. Okay, I'm rejoining, sir. 